Welcome back. In this video, I want to talk to you about how to create a switchboard menu for your application. Now, we have a couple of items in the database at this point, and these could go on a menu so that when you open your database application, you can simply click on an item instead of having to search through the object list here in the database. Now, this might not seem like a big task right now, but as we add more items to the database, this list can grow pretty fast. And one of the rules that I use for my own application is that I have the users go through a menu at all times. I never make it necessary for them to open tables directly because that can create a lot of hazards to your data and it generally makes the application harder to use anyway. I don't want them having to search through this list for what they need. I want a menu that's going to make it very clear where the items they need can be located. And also, a menu can reflect the workflow that your users follow whether they need specific forms or reports for their jobs, you can arrange items on a menu so that they can go through those items in a very logical sequence. So let's see how we can create one right now. The Switchboard Manager is a wizard in Access and it may not be available from the top menu, so we're going to go to the search bar and just type in switchboard manager. You can see that I've searched for it before. Now, right now it's saying it doesn't find a valid switchboard and it's asking to create one, so I'm going to say yes. And it's brought up the switchboard manager and as you can see, it's already added another table to the database, the switchboard items table. It's going to store all the information for this menu in that table. So right now it has a main switchboard and it's also created the switchboard form which it will use for the menu and I'm going to click edit on this and it's allowing us to add items to the switchboard so first I'll add the overdue items report that we just created to the menu and I'll click new for the text overdue items report command open report and report report overdue so it was as simple as that. Close and close and then close. Let's go ahead and open the switchboard form. So it's created that switchboard form and it has a button on there. It's going to place a button and a description for each item on your menu. So I'll go ahead and click on that and it opens the overdue items report. So it's as simple as that. Then I can close this. Very often I'll leave the switchboard menu open throughout the time the application is being used. So whenever you close all items it just goes right back to that switchboard. Now the next step is to add this at your application startup. So I'm going to go to File, Options, and Current Database. And you've seen this screen before when I went over the options for the database. But what we're going to do is come down here to Display Form and I'm going to select Switchboard and click OK. Now it's telling us we have to close and reopen the current database, so I'll click OK. Now one more thing I want to show you at this point, one thing that you might want to do occasionally when you're using Access, especially as you're developing items, is Compact and Repair. I'm going to go to File and I'm going to select Info and you can see that you have an option here called Compact and Repair. Now as you're creating items and making a lot of changes to your design. There's a lot of temporary information that's stored to the tables and compact and repair will essentially clean up that temporary information and it can also repair certain issues. If you notice that your database is not running correctly or if it's throwing a lot of unexplained errors, then this should probably be the first thing that you try. So I'm going to simply click on Compact and Repair Database and that's already done. What that did is essentially close down the database, it created a new copy of it and 
got rid of all the old temporary information. And also what that does, it will significantly reduce the size of your database because as Access stores all that temporary information. Sometimes your database can get quite large, again, especially if you're making a lot of design changes. So it's a good idea to run compact and repair every so often and it reduces the size of the database and keeps things a little bit more manageable. As you noticed, it went ahead and opened the switchboard form and just to make that more obvious, let me go ahead and close the database and let me go ahead and open it up again and it opens that switchboard so you have it right there and again that's in file options current database and display form and you can change that form to anything you want but the switchboard is very handy for creating a quick menu and that's always going to show that message when you close that so let's click OK Let's go ahead and add another item to the main switchboard and switchboard manager. Again, edit because the main switchboard is essentially this page that you're seeing right here. So we're going to click on edit and I'll add the authors form, new authors and open form in edit mode. Form is going to be form authors click OK and it's already there so let's close this close now it's not showing yet again if I hit F5 for a refresh it will go ahead and add that and it's important to do that because otherwise it might update the button positions before it updates the labels and you can accidentally click on the wrong thing so click on authors and it opens up the author info form so I close that and so now we have two items on our switchboard. Now each switchboard page can store up to eight items so you can have multiple pages. So what I'm going to do is go back to the switchboard manager and I'm going to add a new switchboard page and just for the sake of demonstration let's make this one reports and what I'm going to do is open up the main switchboard and edit and I'm going to add that reports page to the main switchboard so I'm going to click new type reports menu and I'm going to leave this as go to switchboard and then under switchboard I'm going to select reports and click OK and close close and hit F5 to refresh and there it is so that goes to the reports menu which actually doesn't have anything on it right yet so let's close this and go back to the switchboard manager edit reports and new and I'll just go ahead and add the overdue report again and open report report overdue click OK and one thing that you can do is add a return button so I'm going to add another one new new switchboard command go to switchboard and main switchboard so now we have a second page called reports and it has that single report on there and a command to return to the main menu and close close and F5 for refresh let's click on reports menu you can see it now has the overdue items report and a return button which takes us back to the main switchboard and I'll add one more button on here and that's an exit button. I'm going to add that to the main switchboard. Edit and new and I'm going to select the exit application command. Click OK and you can also 
rearrange these items if you want. You see you have the move up and move down buttons so you can move these around as you want. But now we have an exit application. I'm going to go ahead and close, close, and again refresh. And so now we have a decent little menu for our application with an exit application button. And if I click on that, it closes the application. And we can also code an option, which I'll show you in a later lesson, to actually close down access completely so that you're completely out of the program. I'll close down access now and reopen the application. And it opens the switchboard. And let me show you the switchboard items table real quick. You can see where it contains all the items. You probably shouldn't edit this table directly. In fact, you very likely shouldn't because you'll mess up your menu. So let me go ahead and close this out. No, don't want to save that. And let me show you one more thing. If I open the form in design view, then we can see a little bit of the design of the database. And you can see that it's a form with a detail section that only seems to have one item on it. But if we take a look at the data section, we click on the form itself and go to the record source under the data section, we can see that it has a query assigned to the form that's actually stored within the form and it's pulling from the switchboard items table and it's pulling the item number and the switchboard ID where the item number is greater than zero and then it adds an extra criteria. It's essentially pulling that list of items and then if we go to the event tab you can see that it has a couple of embedded macros in there, which we haven't gone over yet, but we'll take a look at in future lessons. So it's actually using macros to populate the list of items on this menu from the table, the switchboard items table. So that's, that's a deeper look at how the switchboard menu works. And it's an idea of what you can do with your applications as you get further into access and as you start to work with macros and VBA code. It's one more thing that you can add to your toolbox and that's a look at the switchboard manager. Now, now that we have that, we have a menu that can evolve along with the application so that it makes it just a little bit easier for you and your users to work with.